So epidemiology, the word comes from Greek. Um, if we break it up, so epi means on or upon. Demos means people and logos means the study of. So in other words, the word epidemiology has its roots in the study of what befalls a population. So many definitions have been proposed, but um, the following one really captures the underlying principles and the public health spirit of epidemiology. So it's the study of the distribution and determinants of health related states or events in specified populations and the application of this study to the control of health problems. So epidemiology is a scientific discipline. It has specific methods of scientific inquiry at its foundation. Um, it's The basic epidemiological methods tend to rely on careful observation and use of valid comparison groups to assess whether what was observed, such as the number of cases of disease in a particular area during a particular time period, or the frequency of an exposure among persons with the disease differs from what might be expected. So epidemiology, it's often described as the basic science of public health um, for good reason. So for the firstly, uh, epidemiology is a quantitative discipline. It relies on a working knowledge of probability, statistics and sound research methods. And secondly, it is a method of causal reasoning based on developing and testing hypotheses grounded in scientific fields like biology, behavioural sciences, physics and ergonomics to explain health related behaviours, states and events. But epidemiology isn't just a research activity, but it's an integral part of public health and it provides the foundation for directing practical and appropriate public health action based on this science and causal reasoning. So epidemiology is concerned with the frequency and pattern of health events in a population. So if we take those two terms, frequency refers not only to the number of health events, such as the number of cases of meningitis or diabetes in a population, but also to the relationship of that number to the size of the population. The resulting rate allows epidemiologists to compare disease occurrence across different populations. Uh, if we look at the other term, pattern, now that refers to the occurrence of health-related events by time, place and person. Now, time patterns may be annual, seasonal, weekly, daily, hourly, weekend versus non-weekend, um, or any other breakdown of time that may influence disease or injury occurrence. Place patterns include geographic variation, urban-rural differences, location of work sites or schools, and personal characteristics include demographic factors, which may be related to the risk of illness, injury, or disability, such as age, sex, marital status, and socioeconomic status, as well as behaviours and environmental exposures. Characterising health events by time, place, and person are activities of descriptive epidemiology. So if we just consider this analogy, so take a class of students of journalism. So they're taught that a good news story, whether it's about bank robbery, dramatic rescue or presidential candidate speech, must include the five W's, which are what, who, where, when and why. Sometimes it's cited as why or how, the last one. Now, the five W's are the essential components of a news story, because if any of those five are missing, the story is incomplete. So the same is true in characterising epidemiological events, whether it be an outbreak of norovirus among cruise ship passengers or the use of mammograms to detect early breast cancer. The difference is that the epidemiologist tends to use synonyms for the five W's. So going through them, diagnosis or health event, which is the what, person being the who, place being the where, time being the when, and causes, risk factors and modes of trans transmission being the why and the how. Now, epidemiology is also used to search for determinants, which are the causes and other factors that influence the occurrence of disease and other health-related events. Epidemiologists assume that illness doesn't occur randomly in a population, but happens only when the right accumulation of risk factors or determinants exist in an individual. To search for these determinants, epidemiologists use analytical epidemiology or epidemiological studies to provide the why and the how of such events. They assess whether groups with different rates of disease differ in their demographic characteristics, genetic or immunological makeup, behaviours, environmental exposures or other so-called potential risk factors. Ideally, the findings provide sufficient evidence to direct prompt and effective public health control and prevention measures. Originally, epidemiology was focused exclusively on epidemics of communicable diseases. 
Um, but that sub- subsequently expanded to address endemic communicable diseases and non-communicable infectious diseases. So by the middle of the 20th century, additional epidemiological methods have been developed and applied to chronic diseases, injuries, birth defects, maternal child health, occupational health and environmental health. Then epidemiologists began to look at behaviours related to health and well-being, such as the amount of exercise and seatbelt use and things like that. Now, with the recent explosion in molecular methods, epidemiologists can make important um, strides in examining genetic markers of disease risk. Indeed, the term health-related states or events may be seen as anything that affects the well-being of a population. Nonetheless, many epidemiologists still use the term disease as shorthand for the wide range of health-related states and events that are studied. Now, although epidemiologists and direct health care providers, such as clinicians, are both concerned with the occurrence and control of disease, they differ greatly in how they view the patient. So the clinician is concerned about the health of an individual. Now, the epidemiologist is concerned about the collective health of the people in a community or population. In other words, the clinician's patient is the individual and the epidemiologist's patient is the community. Therefore, the clinician and the epidemiologist have different responsibilities when faced with a person with illness. For example, when a patient with diarrheal disease presents, both are interested in establishing the correct diagnosis. However, while the clinician uses um, basically they focus on treating and caring for the individual, the epidemiologist will focus on identifying the exposure or source that caused the illness, the number of other people who may have been similarly exposed, the potential for further spread in the community, and then interventions to prevent additional cases or reoccurrences. Now, epidemiology is not just the study of health in a population. It also involves applying the knowledge gained by the studies to community-based practice. Like the practice of medicine, the practice of epidemiology is both a science and an art. To make the proper diagnosis and prescribe appropriate treatment for a patient, the clinician combines medical, usually scientific knowledge, with experience, clinical judgment and understanding of the patient. Similarly, the epidemiologist will use scientific methods of descriptive and analytical epidemiology, as well as experience, epidemiological judgment and the understanding of local conditions in diagnosing the health of a community and proposing appropriate, practical and acceptable public health interventions to control and prevent disease in the community. So in summary, epidemiology is the study, so that's a scientific, systematic, data-driven um, study of the distribution, which includes the frequency and pattern, and determinants, which are the causes and risk factors of health-related states and events, which aren't just diseases, in specified populations. Now, patient is community. Individuals are viewed collectively uh, when you think about epidemiology. It also includes the application of this study to the control of health problems. Now, epidemiology and the information generated by epidemiological methods have been used in many ways. For example, they can be used to assess the community's health. So public health officials responsible for policy development, implementation, evaluation use epidemiological information as a factual framework for decision making. So to assess the health of a population or community, relevant sources of data must be identified and analysed by person, place and time. So they may have questions such as what are the actual and potential health problems in the community? Where are they occurring? Which populations are at increased risk? Which problems have declined over time? Which ones are increasing or have the potential to increase? How do these patterns relate to the level and distribution of public health services available? More detailed data may be needed to to be collected and analysed to determine whether health services are available, accessible, effective and efficient. For example, public health officials used epidemiological data and methods to identify baselines to set goals for the nation in 2010, 2000 and in 2010, and to monitor progress towards these goals. Many individuals may not realise that they use epidemiological information to make daily decisions affecting their health. So when people decide to quit smoking, climb the stairs rather than wait for an elevator, eat a salad rather than a cheeseburger with fries for lunch or use a condom, they may be influenced consciously or unconsciously by epidemiologists' assessment of risk. Since World War II, epidemiologists have provided information related to all of these decisions. In the 1950s, epidemiologists reported the increased risk of lung cancer among smokers. In the 1970s, epidemiologists documented the role of exercise and proper diet in reducing the risk of heart disease. In the mid-1980s, epidemiologists identified the increased risk of HIV infection associated with certain sexual and drug-related behaviours.
These and hundreds of other epidemiological findings are directly relevant to the choices people make every day, choices that affect their health over a lifetime. So when investigating a disease outbreak, uh, sorry, outbreak, epidemiologists rely on healthcare providers and lab uh, laboratories to establish the proper diagnosis of individual patients. But epidemiologists also contribute to physicians' understanding of the clinical practice and natural history of disease. So if we take, for example, in the late 1989, a physician saw three patients with unexplained eosinophilia, which is an increase in the number of specific type of white blood cells um, called eosinophils. They also had myalgias, which are severe muscle pains. So although the, the physician could not make a definitive diagnosis, he notified public health authorities. Within weeks, epidemiologists had identified enough other cases to characterise the spectrum and course of the illness that came to be known as eosinophilia myalgia syndrome. More recently, epidemiologists, clinicians and researchers around the world have collaborated to characterise SARS, which is a disease caused by a new type of um, coronavirus that emerged in China in late 2002. Epidemiology has also been instrumental in characterising many non-acute diseases, such as the numerous conditions associated with cigarette smoking, from pulmonary and heart disease to lip, throat and lung cancer. Now, much epidemiological research is devoted to searching for causal factors that influence one's risk of disease. Ideally, the goal is to identify a cause so that appropriate public health action might be taken. One can argue that epidemiology can never prove a causal relationship between exposure and disease, since much of epidemiology is based on ecological reasoning. Nevertheless, epidemiology often provides enough information to support effective action. Examples date back from the removal of the handle from the Broad um, Street pump following John Snow's investigation of cholera in the Golden Square area of London in, 19, in 1854 also includes the withdrawal of a vaccine against rotavirus in 1999 um, after epidemiologists found that it increased the risk of um, interception, interception, a potential life-threatening condition. Just as often, epidemiology and laboratory science converge to provide the evidence needed to establish causation. For example, epidemiologists were able to identify a variety of risk factors during an outbreak of pneumonia among persons attending the American Legion Convention in Philadelphia in 1976. This was despite the fact that the Legionnaire's bacillus was not identified in the laboratory from lung tissue of a person who died from Legionnaires until almost six months later. As a basic science of public health, epidemiology includes the study of frequency, patterns and causes of health-related states or events in population and the application of that study to address public health issues. Epidemiologists use a systematic approach to assess the what, who, where, when, why and how of these health states.